video is an introduction, an overture, to a course of workshops centered on exploration of female aspects of deity. It looks for goddesses hidden in the past and explores their imagery and the effect this can have on ourselves today. It searches for a new vision, a vision that not only acknowledges the female in deity, but makes such divinity a role model for women today. It restores to women the knowledge that they, like men, are made in God's image. This presents us with a new view of our place in the world and our place in nature. Seen from a goddess viewpoint, nature is the source of the universe and understands its ways and will teach humans all they need. Nature, seen in terms of goddesses, releases both women and men from the cycle of domination and subordination that has been built into our thinking. It allows us to find more harmony in our environment. For over 15 years, I have been researching information about goddesses. I have looked at many prehistoric and historic shrines and sites, once sacred to female deities. These have included those in Greece, Israel, Cyprus, Tunisia, Turkey, and not least, the mysterious stone circles, alignments, megaliths, and temples in Britain, Brittany, and Malta. The numerous Asian and African and other deities from many parts of the world are beyond the scope of this program. Now, let us look at some goddesses in a few of their different aspects. First, as mistress of nature, she is always seen with animals. One of their number, Kubaba of Anatolia, now Turkey, is the great goddess Magna Mater, creator of human beings, the world, and the gods themselves. Her worship was most long-lived, right up to and beyond early Christianity. She succeeds a most ancient goddess, going back perhaps 10,000 years, seen here, seated on a throne. She was discovered in Chattel Heok, in what is now Turkey. The site was excavated in only a small part in the 1960s and yielded a wealth of goddess material, much of it to be seen in the Ankara Museum today. It is very much to be hoped that a new dig can be established to discover what other hidden riches of our early civilization are to be found in its caves and mounds. Usually, scholars tell us that if goddesses were venerated, it was because of their fertility function. While this is important, it is not their only characteristic, as we shall see. But I think we must consider sexuality in a new way. For example, here is an Egyptian deity, a magnificent woman, proud and unashamed. And here, by contrast, is a figure from Brittany of about the same period, say 4,000 years ago. She is called La Grande Déesse, the Great Goddess, and she is obviously a personification of women's genitalia. In goddess terms, it is from her womb that all is born, like the earth, and to which all return, and from which all is renewed. The same kind of idea can be understood from the figures of women with open wombs, to be seen on church walls in Britain, Ireland, and elsewhere. These are called Sheelana gigs. But the goddesses were queen of heaven as well as of earth. We recognize them by the full or crescent moon, or the sun itself as part of their attire. Often the sun goddess was a healing deity and cured aching bones, for example, by use of heat. Sometimes, as here, the whole figure is gold, shining like the sun. Then there is the combination of light and dark making a whole. We see her, Demeter and Persephone, mother and daughter, mirror imaging each other, one white, one black. There is no division. 
They are separate, but an integral part of each other. It seems that in antiquity, the divine was recognized in all aspects of creation, and we see this exemplified in the fusion of woman, beast and bird that make up the sphinxes. Look too at Mother Goose, who laid the golden egg of the universe and carries the goddesses on her back. Then there is the serpent in the Garden of Eden and her Mesopotamian counterpart, the dragon serpent Tiamat, creator of the universe. We see her here being killed by her grandson and his friends who want to take over her powers. When we turn to the Bible, we find that although people were continually being condemned for worshipping goddesses, in fact they never stopped doing so and would not give up their beloved deities such as Ashtaroth, Asherah, Anat and Lilith, the latter being remembered only as a demon, although she was goddess of breath and spirit. The figure of the serpent or dragon is curiously ambivalent while on the one hand it indicates horror and evil, as here, yet the serpent is also a symbol of medicine and healing, as in the wand of mercury, which itself provides today the symbol for a doctor of medicine. Here is the goddess of health, Hygieia, with her healing snake. She is one of a family of healing deities whose symbol is the serpent. Now, this is a Celtic goddess whose face is formed by two serpents. She stands in a churchyard in England where she was rescued. She had been placed face downwards as a stepping stone into the church. Serpents indicated not only healing but renewal as they were seen to slough off their skins and apparently live forever. They are sometimes shown as spirals which have similar meanings and can indicate female divinities. Number three is often a factor in spiral designs and in terms of goddesses. It can symbolize birth, death and renewal, but also in connections with the moon's phases, it can be seen as the moon's rising, its fullness and its decline. Sometimes goddesses were seen as reflecting this in their aspects as maiden, mother and crone. Triple goddesses were revered widely. Two contrasts in time, the Indus Valley, now Pakistan, about 3000 BCE, and Botticelli's version of the Three Graces. A remarkable example of an early triple goddess is the Venus of Lepune, France. As far as I know, no one else has commented that when firstly you see her, she is obviously in her fertility mother aspect. But when we turn her one way, she is a maiden with long hair down her back. And, turning again, she is an old woman, her shoulders bowed and hair not to be seen. She is the crone. Now for an unusual version. Here we have four Celtic mothers rather than three. They are in London and from the Roman period. I believe the fourth aspect indicates the dark of the moon, which we must all pass through before the light shows again. Many researchers believe that right back to 20,000 years ago, women calculated the dates of their menstrual periods and duration of pregnancies by drawing lines on stones and bones, relating them to the moon's phases. Here is an early goddess figure from southern France with such markings drawn on a crescent moon. Margaret Murray, the archaeologist, has suggested that women were the first mathematicians because they had a need to count ahead. talk about the way our foreparents used the whole landscape to personify the goddesses, but I have no time to fill out this theme. Here, however, are some of the ways in which they did so. You see temples in the shape of a woman's body, megaliths, and hill figures and hills themselves, which were goddess symbols. Today, the figure of the Virgin Mary fulfills for many a notion of a divine female. The black Madonnas are especially beloved, while this drawing by Dürer 
shows the Virgin on a crescent moon as Queen of Heaven. I will end by showing you a picture I took at a Neolithic temple site in Malta. It was supposed to show the way the ancient peoples might have learned geometry from the angles cast by sun and shadow. But when the picture was developed, it came out like this. She was there. We have traveled a long journey. We have been exploring the ancient goddesses in the background of our culture. Although fully visible when you look for them, they have been hidden for so long. All of us may understand that female divinity has been part of human consciousness from earliest times to the present day. Contrary to all we have been led to believe, female divinity has been there and is powerful. We need to continue our research into the past to fill out this new dimension of today's quest. Asphodel Long's new book, In a Chariot Drawn by Lions, is published by the Women's Press.